I get called out a lot on social media, and one person's name is mentioned more than anyone else's. Dr. Jason Fung. In the interest of scientific discourse, I thought I'd make a video response. I would like to think that Jason himself won't mind because he is more than happy to critique other people. And if he wants to reply to this video, of course he is more than welcome. Now, videos like this often create a bit of a shitstorm of a comment section. It turns into a battle of two sides. Black and white, good and bad, low carb, and calorie balance proponents. This video is an attempt to bridge the gap between these two sides so we can discuss things rationally. So to kick things off, I think that low carb diets and fasting protocols have a lot of validity. I am confident that those who implement these with a lot of people will get some great weight loss results, Jason included. However, there are some aspects of the narrative that I disagree with, so I thought I'd voice a few examples. Why do you pretend that 100 calories of nuts is the same as 100 calories of white bread? It's like, it's not. Nobody that I know of in the calorie balance world claims that all foods are exactly the same. We know that different macronutrients have different thermic effects. We know that some foods are more satiating than others. We also have research papers specifically examining whether different forms of nuts will have different levels of metabolizable energy. E.g. our whole unprocessed nuts metabolize differently to nut butters. If the intention here is to imply that all calorie balance proponents pretend that all food sources are the same, that is false. Commenting on the Women's Health Initiative. Jason claimed that despite calorie counting, there was virtually no weight loss. And this was a stunning and severe rebuke to the calorie theory of obesity. If we look at the study, we can see that not only were participants not calorie counting, they were not actually given calorie restriction or weight loss goals. They were encouraged to reduce their fat intake and increase their intake of vegetables, fruits, and grains. Yes, the intervention group did report eating slightly fewer calories, but the control group did as well. They were not calorie counting, and this wasn't even an intentional weight loss intervention. He has proposed other positions within the conventional calorie model, including calories in versus calories out being totally independent, which we know isn't true, that we know how many calories we are eating, which again, we know isn't true, and that calories out are under our conscious control. We have a significant amount of literature on these ranging from adaptive thermogenesis to calorie misreporting to exercise interventions resulting in lower than predicted levels of weight loss. None of the aforementioned accurately represent what most intelligent calorie balance proponents think. And my fear with straw man arguments is it often creates a further divide between two ideologies. Let's pick one of those and go into a little bit more detail. People now make the entirely unwarranted assumption that calorie output remains stable, so reducing calorie intake automatically results in loss of body fat. Now, I'm genuinely not entirely sure who he thinks believes this, but there is a growing body of literature on metabolic adaptation, and some of it is from a researcher that he has criticised in the past, so I assume he is aware of this literature. Yes, total daily energy expenditure can decrease with weight loss. Part of that is to be expected. The metabolic cost of a lighter version of you is going to be lower than a heavier version of you. And yes, there are examples of metabolic adaptation where total daily energy expenditure decreases above and beyond what is predicted by body weight change alone. However, implying that these changes are of a magnitude large enough to cancel out any energy deficit just simply isn't supported by the literature. Even in the most extreme examples of the Biggest Loser study and the Minnesota Starvation Experiment, participants still lost weight. Now to me this feels like Jason is criticising some extreme views which aren't actually held by most knowledgeable calorie balance proponents. If leading obesity researchers held this view, then I would totally agree with him on the criticisms. But I don't think it is fair to use these criticisms against the importance of energy balance. That would be like me saying, oh, you like low carbohydrate diets? Are you saying that I can just drink vegetable oil all day? It's criticizing a straw man argument that most people don't agree with. And again, where's the randomized control trials that reducing calories is going to lead to long-term weight loss? Like, we pretend we live in an era of evidence-based medicine, so show us the evidence after 50 years that reducing calories is going to lead to weight loss. We also don't have 50-year randomized control trials showing that low-carbohydrate diets outperform low-fat diets. 50-year randomized control trials aren't exactly commonplace. Now, long-term weight loss is notoriously difficult. I agree with this. However, our views diverge because he seems to use this to imply that energy balance isn't important and there is a better solution to this. So, let's look at some head-to-head -head literature. One systematic review compared very low-carbohydrate diets to low-fat diets with a minimum of 12 months follow-up. 
there was a weighted mean difference in favour of low carbohydrate diets reducing total body weight. However, at less than one kilogram, it was so small it was described as being of little clinical significance. A meta-analysis of isocaloric controlled feeding trials showed that low fat diets actually resulted in slightly more body fat losses. However, once again, the changes were so small they were described as physiologically meaningless. Let's look at a systematic review of systematic reviews on low carbohydrate diets. Reduced energy intake resulted in similar levels of weight loss regardless of macronutrient distribution. Low carbohydrate diets had better adherence levels in three randomized controlled trials, but five had better adherence levels with balanced weight loss diet interventions. So to summarize, we are in a position where a subset of low carbohydrate fans claim that energy balance is totally irrelevant. You should be focusing on lowering insulin. Now, I believe that low carbohydrate diets are a viable tool for weight loss. However, they are not the only viable tool and they still depend on energy balance. If similar levels of weight loss can be achieved through a variety of modalities, I would prefer to give you the tools to make your own decisions based on your personal preference.